If you've been to a UK supermarket recently, you might notice that there has been a distinct lack of, well, certain items. Most notably, uh, the big one that everyone's been talking about is, of course, tomatoes. But it's not just tomatoes. It's been a couple of things as well. Uh, and we are worried that a lot of these, shall we say, fresh fruits and vegetables suddenly might not be on supermarket shelves for too much longer. This is partly because of supply chain issues. It, it is all being down to supply chain. And one of the things, um, and bear in mind, this is not just a, a Brexit thing. This is also a pandemic thing as well. Certainly a, a, a post-pandemic thing. It has had a, a part to play in it, but not a major part as Brexit is currently having at the moment. Because that is the big problem we are seeing, as we always said it eventually would be. Shock horror, we're being proved right yet again. <laughs> <coughs> so, um, what's going on really here? So, we in the UK, especially during the pandemic, saw the shock to the supply chain. And lots of countries around the world have recognised that not only just supply chains for food, um, everything from, from materials, uh, goods, you name it, long supply chains... They were the most effective, but it was the short supply chains that managed to keep up, um, certainly being the more productive ones, and the most sort of unaffected from the pandemic, while it was the longer ones that did tend to suffer the worst effects of it. But of course, you throw Brexit into that, where now that's becoming even more issues, slowing up, the, 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 as we always said it would, it would cause trouble at the border. And remember, yet yeah, we are still not fully implementing the checks on the UK border, not just the Northern Ireland Protocol one, which we've talked about for quite a few, uh, few moments, but sooner or later, the government will have to implement these checks, and they have been putting these off. Even Jacob Rees-Mogg, who was the last guy to kick the can down the road of these, these checks, and came out and said, well, we're not going to implement these checks yet because um, it might cause a problem to business. <laughs> and he's just like, well, when are you going to implement these checks? You can't just keep the border open forever, <laughs> you know? But <coughs> we are seriously facing some potential serious food shortages. And these could be proving to be pretty serious in the coming weeks and months. So. We're going to go into these articles, but it's so far leeks, tomatoes, and a couple of other fresh fruit and vegetables. And it's not just, of course, the supply coming into the country, which we've had to increase, but also you've had British farmers, which are having huge problems at the moment, trying to, well, grow these. You've had an incredibly bad year for, in fact, past, bad past couple of years, really, for, for growing uh, they've had labor shortages, which have affected that they mean they can't either plant, or if they did plant them, that they can't pick the whole harvest, which means you've had food literally rotting in the ground, which we've reported upon quite a few times over the years. Um, yeah, so it is, to be honest, it is a complete and utter mess. But it just goes to show you one of the things that we talked about all the time is that the current government just has no idea in a couple of these serious things when it comes to it. And of course, you've had Theresa Coffey making hilarious comments saying, oh, instead, they can eat turnips. So, yeah, <laughs> this um, this is probably get to about get probably got only not only going to get incredibly serious, but we are also probably going to see some incredibly funny comments from people like Theresa Coffey and probably some other top tier Tories soon. So strap your laughing belts in and ready for those comments when they come. But anyway, we're going to go diving into this because this is, yeah, just illuminates the severe the severity of the problem. So, uh, like I say, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Of course, uh, down below there are links to my uh, Patreon page, the one-off station link called Buy Me Coffee. There's the YouTube thank you button, the Pony Club down below as well. And of course, do remember to ring the bell as well. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment down below as well on what you think to all this mess at the moment. Have you been to your local supermarket, be you a member of the UK or somewhere else? Like I say, eventually, I'm sure YouTube will allow us to upload uh, photos in the comments. Whether they will allow that or not yet, I don't know. We'll see. But maybe one day, eventually. It was talked about a potential feature, but they never implemented it. But hey, we'll see if they finally do it. But anyway, 
Let's go diving into this. Like I say, this comes from the Independent with the title of Food Shortages Latest, saying the UK could run out of leaks in weeks after the most difficult season ever. So growers are warning of a leak shortage that will see Britain's uh, British growers, <coughs> British grown supplies exhausted by April. The high temperatures and a lack of rain, followed by a period of cold weather, are being blamed for creating the most difficult season ever. Tim Cressy, the chairman of the Leak Growers Association, said, uh, said, and it comes after the Liberal Democrats have called on the government to convene an emergency COBRA meeting after four of the biggest UK supermarkets have put limits on the amount of fruit and vegetables customers may buy. It comes as growers have warned that some fruits and vegetables could only last until May. So this is a rolling crisis. So you've got potentially April, May, where we could start to see fruits and vegetables just disappear from British supermarkets altogether. And <clears throat> this is a, like I say, this is a multi thing. This is a thing of the fact that you've had constant British growers having bad season after bad season, being affected by the cost of oil crisis, being affected by the lack of available workers. Brexit plays a big part into this as well, that supermarkets now cannot get fresh fruit and vegetables into the country because of, of checks and the delays at the border that this, that, that this cause. It's, it's an absolute mess, to say the least. <laughs> Meanwhile, supermarket shelves in Ukraine are busting with fresh produce as the UK suffers a shortage of fruit and vegetables. And remember, Ukraine, a country currently being invaded by Russia, somehow manages to find it can stock fresh fruit and vegetables, no problem, but we can't says a lot about the state of real supply chains and the problems that we are actually facing. So Tesco's, Aldi, Morrison's and Asda have introduced rationing, placing a cap on three items per customer on tomatoes, peppers and cucumbers. <coughs> and it gets worse. Does you have this? Dave Rossi, the professor from Sustainable Agricultural Systems at Cranfield University, has this to say. He said that British farmers and growers are having received very little help with the rising costs, while the UK is in the worst affected country for rising energy costs. If greenhouse growers cannot afford to, afford to turn on the LED lights and heating, then they cannot help plug the shortfall. Without government intervention with energy costs or even retail support in rising prices, our farmers and growers are going to continue to struggle. And bear in mind, not just farmers, a load of businesses are about to see their energy support just get turned off. So it's not just this sector that's going to suffer. It's going to be a wide variety of different British businesses that are going to suffer for this, for, because of this. He said, long term, Science and technology can begin to address some of these challenges that farmers face, potentially lowering the input costs with robotics and labor and improving yields with gene editing. And of course, to offer new production systems for uh, vertical farming and cultured meat. <coughs> so there are ideas out there, but the farmers have to have the government incentives to be able to bring some of this stuff in, or you have to have like government challenges, you know, you know, government incentives, initiatives to farmers to be able to do this. It's not just something farmers can just automatically turn on. Um, the Netherlands is is a, is a fantastic example of this. They have really put a lot of uh, money into hydroponics, massive amounts of money into hydroponics. But anyway, continue. But we also need to challenge the cheap food narratives. This isn't the fault of farmers that people are struggling to afford food. This is a social inequality problem, and technology is not a solution for poverty. Exactly. There are also wider problems in here, and of course, the Conservatives ain't going to really help that, because they haven't shown any interest in even now, during the cost of living crisis, in really helping people. Um, 
And of course, it also comes to this as well, because you've got UK major growers are delaying planting crops due to high energy costs. So the Lee Valley Growers Association, we've talked about this before, is a massive um, conglomeration of of cucumber growers, like a big uh, where almost um, greenhouse area, and they are growing less because, well, they can't afford to turn on you know those lamps to help heat the greenhouses, so they're having massive problems. So Lee Valley Growers Association has said. Uh, that some of the UK's major growers are delaying planting crops because of the high energy costs. It is about 80 members across an area that includes Greater London, Herefordshire and Essex, who produce around uh, three quarters of the UK's cucumbers and peppers, as well as a lot of aubergines and tomatoes. The Association Secretary Lee Stiles told the BBC that the high energy costs and low supermarket prices are making it harder for growers to earn a living and many are delaying planting or growing less, and are about 10% have now left the sector altogether. So this is a wide, wide-ranging, far-reaching problem. And to be honest, I don't see anything coming from the current government saying, this is how we intend to solve this. This is, this is what we're going to do to, to help out on this. And we shouldn't be surprised because this is, of course, you know, a typical Tory government mode. Um, You know, we're only going to step in when it becomes a serious major problem. And by that time, it's almost too late to actually do something because the problem is already there. And they're trying to desperately apply a sticking plaster to try and solve the problem. It's it's just not really how a functioning government should run. (laughs) But unfortunately, this is indeed the style that has been done by the Tories pretty much since David Cameron came into office all the way back in, well, well, 2015 at at this point. So should we expect anything less? Probably not. (laughs) Um, But yeah, there you go. Uh, So yeah, food shortages on fruit and veg. um, And people are starting to notice. People are starting to notice quite a lot and a lot of this is down to big brexit problems <laughs> so as always uh thank you very much uh for watching please of course as always please do remember to hit that like share and subscribe button and of course down below uh there are is my patreon page the monetization link called buy me coffee the patreon um the, the, the patreon the the youtube uh, uh subscription the pony club and of course the youtube thank you button. of course remember to leave a comment down below as well and of course remember to ring the bell and as always we'll see you all next time